Profiling is the lazy man's national security policy. I mean, it's, it's the easiest low-hanging fruit. It's red meat to the masses. Uh, but I want to be clear here. Uh, profiling isn't only wrong from the perspective of, uh, you know, sort of who we are as Americans. It's actually bad security policy. Uh, we live in a time in which people are becoming radicalized. But let me just put this in perspective. There are six million Muslims in America. There is maybe a handful of arrest and essentially five successful attacks, right? And most of them were a stabbing and then we had San Bernardino. So let's put this in perspective. Those are great numbers. We are not Europe. Europe has a generational problem. And that is because they had immigrants or people who did not fit the European profile who are growing up as Europeans, traveling to Syria to arm and train themselves and returning back home. That is an epidemic. That is a systemic problem of which a society, Europe is going to have to confront that in a real way. It's, law enforcement's not gonna cure this problem. We don't have that problem. And the reason why we don't have that problem isn't because we're surveying Muslim communities or we're keeping them out. It is because we as a country, through fits and starts, and we haven't been perfect, we as a country have been able to assimilate and acclimate and in, invest in and welcome the other. Right? Not always perfect, I'm willing to admit that, but whether it's Hispanic or Muslim or Arab or Irish, over time, those communities view America as their own. They don't travel to Syria to come back and harm Americans. And we must commit to that integration, to that sense that uh, we don't view these populations as the other. So things like profiling or following mosques or uh, keeping certain uh, religions out or, you know, wiretapping imams. I mean, all the craziness that you're hearing right now, I promise you, will make us less safe over time. And so it, it's, it's not just an argument about the left and you know, the heartstrings and feeling progressive versus the right and pro-security. It is, if in the course of America's history, uh, the, you know, besides our oceans, which have helped a lot, the, the, the one attribute of our policies that has made us safer and more secure is our ability to absorb and welcome and integrate uh, new communities, and we, we have to remain committed to that. People know that the risk of them dying from terrorism is like 0.0001%, you know, divided by 10. Like, I mean, we know the risk is very, very small. But people also do feel like the world is kind of on fire. Those aren't inconsistent to me, right? I mean, you can, you can still feel very nervous about the world out there and recognize that the risks to your own family are pretty minimal. And I think that President Obama sort of focuses on the first, right? And I think in some ways he needs to tell people, I get it though, I get those fears and you know, here's what we're doing and here's what you can do. And these other guys, to be honest, these other guys and all their tough talk, that won't work, you know, and, and, and sort of, accept our own irrationality. I don't know if that's fair to say, but I know the number. I, I mean, everyone knows that the numbers are incredibly low, but if it's, you know, if it's your kid, that's the 0.0001%, you know, that is an existential threat, you know. The phone calls I get in the last couple of months you know, from Paris attacks on are real. I mean, they're, they're the real concerns of, uh, of people who, care everything for the, their children in their lives or their spouse or, or their uh, extended family. And these are real phone calls of real concern. And I, I worry that Democrats, in particular, I worry President Obama, who tends to think of this stuff rather rationally, um, isn't quite getting the emotions, right? And the emotions aren't being you know, cultivated by cable news or Donald Trump only. I mean, I think that there are real concerns for people and their families right now. And, Sometimes I wish, you know, President Obama would just say, like, I get it. I have two daughters. I get it. You know, I get it. You're not irrational, but let me tell you what we're doing and what you can do to address it. Because I do think that if we view those who are nervous about the world right now, you know, whether it's Zika or terrorism or hurricane seasons coming up, that, that uh, if we don't channel that, those concerns, uh, 
someone like Donald Trump walks right into the vacuum. And I think that's what's happened a little bit.